This is how sickle cell disease affects the body. Sickle cell disease is a common genetic condition, particularly amongst the Afro-Caribbean population. But very little is publicized about this condition. Now, sickle cell affects the shape of red blood cells, which carry oxygen in our bodies. Now, normally these cells are round and smooth, allowing them to flow easily through blood vessels. But because of a genetic issue, they turn into a sickle or a banana shape. This change makes it harder for them to move through blood vessels and can block the flow of blood. When that happens, the tissues that rely on that blood flow don't get enough oxygen. The main problem with this condition is something we call a sickle cell crisis. I'd like to hand you over now to my very good friend, Dr. Lewis Stubbers, to describe a sickle cell crisis in a bit more detail. Now, Dr. Lewis Thomas has been diagnosed with sickle cell disease, but despite this, he's managed to carve out an incredible career as an experienced GP and a life coach. I guess my first experience with sickle cell was in the form of a, a sickle cell pain crisis that I had when I was um, about 12 years old. It, it, it basically, it feels like someone's like drilling into your bone Really? So it, it's like it's like it's like bone pain. It's it's kind of like the same kind of pain that I, I I sort of imagine that you'd get from like breaking a bone or um you know um having a heart attack, but the heart attack is in your, your bones. <laughs> this pain comes from not getting enough oxygen in your joints and muscles. Sickle cell disease can also affect other parts of your body, such as the brain and kidneys causing multiple body organ issues. I won't lie, making this video was quite a challenging one for me, especially because this condition affects people in my community, people that look just like me. So I spent loads of hours reading through and researching about this condition just to get things right. Then I realized that race plays an important role in the experience of patients, especially when they present to hospital in acute pain. It was, just, it was just, you know, this kind of like vibe I got that I was um, not being believed. And I think the fact that I was a black male um, and the experience of, um, you know, health professionals, especially, um, you know, in acute settings like A&E, the experience they have with um, drug um, dependent patients, drug addicts, drug seeking behaviors. That was kind of overriding the fact that um, this was, um, you know, a sickle cell patient um, in pain. Like they didn't really understand what that meant. It's the kind of systemic racism um, and the impact that, um, that, that that has that can affect people's judgment and, and behaviors towards um, sickle cell patients. My hope is that this video will spark the beginner conversations on how we can all come together to overcome these challenges of systemic racism that patients like Lewis have faced throughout their lives. I think one of the things that we can do here is to spread the message about this condition, increase the awareness so more is known about it. This is an important step in breaking down the barriers of discrimination that are particularly associated with this condition. Sickle cell is a lifelong condition. An important aspect of managing this condition is by being aware of your triggers and avoiding going into an acute pain crisis. In people with very severe disease, a sickle cell crisis can be unpredictable. Now, common triggers for a sickle cell crisis include a sudden change in temperature, which can cause the blood vessels to narrow, very strenuous or excessive exercise, which can cause a shortage of oxygen, and also dehydration, which can be caused by excessive alcohol intake. I think the main thing is to know um, yourself um, and know your own limits um, because uh, prevention is better than cure or, you know, in this case, pain management. So um, focus on, um, you know, 
being aware of your triggers um, and not putting yourself in situations that um, are going to trigger you to have um, a, a pain crisis. If um, you feel uh, the pain coming on, um, just, you know, make sure you drink as much water, rest, um, you know, let someone know, don't try and, um, you know, soldier through it yourself uh, but most importantly um just try and avoid um getting in situations that are gonna um provoke it your doctor will also play a role in keeping you healthy by making sure that you're up to date with your vaccinations in order to avoid you having any serious infections sometimes regular blood transfusions may be needed if the body starts showing signs of damage as a result of the effect of sickle cell on the body. Examples of long-term medications usually commenced by the hematologist include hydroxyurea. Now some patients may eventually require a bone marrow transplant. Most people with sickle cell disease live happy lives. An example here being my good friend Dr. Lewis Thomas who has been able to craft a really successful career as a GP and a life coach. He's got really big goals of inspiring you all to achieve big things despite this condition. I think it comes from the kind of barriers that I've had to, uh, you know, deal with, um, with sickle cell. Um, that's essentially kind of motivated me to want to help other people overcome theirs. Thanks for watching today's video. Now research is done all over the world to make sure that outcomes for patients with sickle cell disease are improved. I've attached a link to the video description which has got a lot more resources that will help you to understand this condition in some more detail. As always please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video and until the next time I'll see you soon.